headlines. Let's check in with KRQ and News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez with the morning's headlines. Goodness. Are you going to try? I don't know. You know, I'm really, I don't know what's wrong with me when it comes to playing the lottery. Yeah. I just, I'm not that interested. I don't know why. I just, you well, know, it's those too odds bad. have something to do with it, probably. Yeah, one in 175 million. <laughs> that, those are your odds. So I don't know. You know, best of luck to those of you who do play. <laughs> so good morning, folks. Uh, if you're at home, we have a lot of news to get to this morning. Uh, this is some pretty major news here in town. The U.S. Department of Justice has announced it is launching an official investigation on how the Albuquerque Police Department is running. We are focused on whether there is a pattern or practice of excessive force by the APD. Now that was the Assistant Attorney, Attorney General making the announcement yesterday. You see, the federal government is now going to look at more than two dozen Albuquerque police shootings since 2010. Cases involving police brutality and dirty cops. The feds want to see if the police department has a cultural problem and how the police chief deals with these cases once he knows about them. Police Chief Ray Schultz tells us he will cooperate with the Department of Justice. The families of people police have shot are happy with the investigation. Renetta Torres, who you just saw there, her schizophrenic son was a victim. He was shot in his own backyard when uh, police shot and killed him last year. The first shot, the medical examiner said he would have survived. The second one killed him. The third one, I don't know what that was for. So when they talk about officer safety, I'd like to know how officer safety is involved when you're shooting people in the back. Now, in addition to the DOJ investigation, the FBI is also investigating individual officers that could result in criminal charges against them. New Mexico is topping the list of states that are now cracking down on unemployment fraud. This has been a huge problem here in the state. The state of New Mexico had paid nearly $700 million to people who were claiming unemployment but were really not eligible. Now, Workforce Solutions is doing what it can to keep tabs on those who file for unemployment by checking their job search status. Officials say that mistakes were made because the number of people who were filing for unemployment was just overwhelming. People certifying for other people on behalf of other people, um, returning to work or taking work and not reporting it, such as cash jobs, anything like that. On the other hand, some people aren't aware that they have to contact the agency and let them know that they are working again. Two Republicans in Sandoval County who are running for office have to decide today if they want a recount. The Rio Rancho Observer says the two races involve Eileen Garbani and Paula Paponi for county clerk, as well as John Sapien and David Doyle for a seat in the state Senate. Now, the races are close, but not close enough for an automatic recount. Paponi, by the way, has paid more than $2,000 to have the ballots impounded. If you own a small business and are wondering how President Obama's new health care law would affect you? Listen to this. This morning is your chance to talk with folks who are in charge of creating the health insurance exchange here in New Mexico. The meeting is going to be from 8.30 to 11. And it's going to be at the Human Services Department offices in Santa Fe. In the debate between jobs versus animal rights, jobs are coming out the winner in Bernalillo County. That is because last night the county commission decided to change its rules to allow Loveless Respiratory Research Institute and other labs that test on animals to keep doing so here in town. Now, Loveless used to be on federal land, but recently that land went to the county. Animal rights activists, as you can imagine, are not happy with the county's decision, but Loveless now says it has no plans to move the lab or the 1,200 jobs there. And here is something we found out that is just for the ladies, sort of. It's a she car. This is kind of interesting. It's a car that's made in Japan specifically for women. It's pink, of course. Well, most of them are pink. And this is actually the new version of the Honda Fit. There it is. Check it out. Here's what's pretty cool about it. The windshield apparently cuts about 99% of UV, UV rays. And it has a special type of AC system that won't leave your hands cracked. You know that issue that you have sometimes that the AC dries out your hands? Well, there you go. The car's designer says that female drivers gave their input and they were concerned about the summer sun and dry skin. And, you know, if you don't like pink, 
the vehicle does come in black, brown, or white. Well, there you go. You know, I heard a smart aleck this morning make a comment about how, well, why doesn't the car drive for women? As though we need the car to drive for us, you know? I won't say who it was, anyway. but... Uh, uh, well, I know a lot of <laughs> women drivers a lot better than a lot of the guy yeah, drivers I know, too. There you go. And that pink car reminds me of the pink ladies' car from Greece. <laughs> yes, the modern version, compact. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth.